Hello, hello everybody. Today I want to talk about something that many of us don't want to talk about. But it's something we need to talk about and things we need to be aware of. The reason I want to talk about shrimp diseases and other problems we run into as shrimp keepers that regard shrimp health is because of my Facebook feed. I'm a member of many shrimp Facebook groups as I'm sure many of you guys are too since mostly we're all just a bunch of shrimp nerds. <laughs> Something that I always see, but something that I have seen more and more again and again is sick shrimp. Brand new shrimp. These folks just got and they arrive obviously sick. Then there are some people that I have been helping out. Sometimes shrimp arrive and look perfectly healthy. Weeks later show signs of infection with no other exposures other than when they got them. Many nasties we can get come on plants. Some of these problems are worse than others as in some are fatal. And some are just an inconvenience or not really that pretty to look at unless they get into infestation levels. Then they can become a problem. First, I'll cover some things you need to keep in mind when you get new shrimp. Then we'll go over some of the most popular shrimp diseases and possible treatments. The first and most, thing, most important thing that we do when we purchase new shrimp is buying shrimp from the right source. Your best bet is almost always to find a trusted breeder who breeds their own shrimp. If you're in the market for shrimp, I invite you to check out my website, markslayaquatics.com. All my shrimp are home bred by myself. And while nothing is ever 100% for sure, I can assure you I take all measures possible to, to raise possibly some of the most healthy neocaridinia shrimp available anywhere. So basically what it boils down to is this. There are people who sell the shrimp they breed like myself but the vast majority of people are importing shrimp by the thousands to resell them. So if you bought your shrimp from almost any of the bigger online shrimp vendors or from a local fish store, there stands to be a very good chance that your shrimp are imported shrimp. Imported shrimp are mostly raised in Asia where they come from, shipped across the world, put in holding tanks and are shipped off or sold off to buyers. Well, this is common in all aspects of the aquarium trade of importing from overseas farms. Shrimp are raised in outside ponds exposed to any number of diseases and parasites. Then, since they are imported for so cheap, they are raised and shipped in very densely populated situations. So if there's a problem, they're all likely to get it. While well, some shrimp importers go the extra mile to quarantine their shrimp and treat any sick ones, most are just getting them in and shipping them out as fast as they come in. These, shri these shrimp are imported for pennies per shrimp. So like I said, before they imported, before they are imported by the thousands or even tens of thousands for cheap, which means less value is placed on each shrimp because it's a numbers game. They are so cheap, they just need to get enough to live long enough to be sold. Same situation as feeder fish. Since they are so cheap and sold by the thousands, they get less care and are seen as cheap throwaways. While on the other hand, a person who breeds and raises their own shrimp are far more likely to be, these shrimp are in much, far more likely to be in much better health. They are kept in lower numbers and each shrimp has a much higher value to the home breeder, which means they're better taken care of in most cases. I mean, it's that simple. If you got, you got 10,000 shrimp coming and going every week, you don't really give a flip about each one, but if you, <laughs> you're raising a colony and got a co couple colonies and you're doing your best to stay on top of everything these shrimp are going to be much better cared for it just makes sense this is not meant to be seen as a bashing on shrimp importers there are some that do as good as they can but as always nothing is 100 percent and actually importing shrimp is necessary because there are just not enough people breeding shrimp domestically to fulfill the demand for shrimp so getting imported shrimp is not always bad if you get a really dedicated seller but almost always a good homebred shrimp will be much healthier than an imported shrimp. So next we'll talk about quarantine and isolation are the two most important things to keep in mind when it comes to keeping your shrimp healthy. What do I mean by that? Basically it means the least amount of exposure to our sh the most, the least amount of, <laughs> of exposure a shrimp have with possible contamination sources, whether it be sick shrimp or other nasties our shrimp are exposed to like plants Something I've seen many, many times helping folks with their shrimp is they already have healthy shrimp, want to get more shrimp, so they get them from another source. 
I've had customers buy my shrimp, have them do good, but they want lots of shrimp quickly. So they get a cheap, huge lot of poor quality shrimp on eBay for super cheap. They then ask me for help because the shrimp they got for me were all doing good. Then they get these others that all died within a week. And then the ones they got for me that were healthy and doing good begin to die off after all the cheap ones die within a week. So by within a month, they are left with no shrimp. Another example where something similar happens is that folks are wanting to breed lines and want to mix genetics. So they want to diver diversify genetics and think their shrimp will be better with shrimp from two different sellers. Well, it sounds like a good idea. You're doubling your exposure to disease and parasites. If you want to mix shrimp from two different sources, best practice is to quarantine and keep each group of shrimp separately. Then after everything is good, then you can later introduce them to each other after all. Everything is in the all clear. When I say isolate, I mean just that. Limiting exposure to the shrimp nasties. So let's say you have a booming, successful shrimp colony going. You're not going to want to just throw in plants from all different kinds of different sources all willy nilly. You need to look at it as if everything you put in your tank is a possible exposure to shrimp illness. For me personally, this is how I keep all my shrimp tanks as healthy as possible. I've been breeding shrimp for over five years now. I have not added a single outside shrimp in almost four years. <laughs> that means I have not got a single new shrimp line in four years. I have just made better and made more of the same shrimp lines I've had for the last four years. I have not added a plant in any of my tanks from an outside source in around three years. And I realize that my situation is way different than most people. And I don't expect you guys to be as hardcore about it as I am, but just remember, if you add shrimp from two sources, you double your chances of problems. Three different places, well, that triples your chances of problems. Same thing goes for plants. The more different sources that you get your plants from, the more chances you take to pick up one of those dreaded shrimp nasties that we're about to cover. So before you add anything new to your tanks, really stop and think about it. Especially, especially if you have a good thing going, ask yourself the question, is it really worth the possibility of it ruining everything that is going so good in this tank? Next, I'm gonna cover some of the most common problems that shrimp get and what we can do to treat them. This is by no means an extensive list of problems that shrimp tanks get, but just some of the most common ones that I see almost every day in my Facebook feed of people asking, what is wrong with their shrimp? What does my shrimp have on it? Now, these are the most common ones. Now, this is, like I said, there's tons, tons more, and I'm not going into great detail here, but this is just so you guys can get a quick look at some of the most common ones. So let's talk about the diseases, the most nastiest, one of the worst ones that I know of. <laughs> this is known as the dreaded green fungus, Elobiopsidae and is almost certainly a death sentence in almost all cases. There have been reports of people having some success treating with salt and or hydrogen peroxide. I recommend removing any infected shrimp and keeping them in their own small container. If you wish to try and treat, you can look up and try different remedies like folks say they've had luck with. But as far as I'm concerned, it is almost always a death sentence and any shrimp showing signs of this should be removed immediately. So the pictures you're seeing here of Elobiopsidae are from my good friend Frank. Frank has been a repeat customer of mine and I've been helping him with some of his other shrimp that he's got. And he was asking me, why is this? He, he's asking me if this shrimp here was buried. He sent me a bunch of pictures like, no, no. He, I believe Frank said he got this shrimp from a local fish store. So again, more than likely, I'm sure, well, I'll about guarantee it was an imported shrimp. and. I mean, these shrimp had to be gone over and gone over and gone over. And the thing is, Frank had this shrimp for months and it looked healthy as, as far as he could tell. And then as the time has gone on, it might've just been a little tiny, tiny bit, maybe not even enough to see. So when you get these imported shrimp, even if people are quarantining and doing the best they can, there's still gonna be a lot that slipped through the cracks. So even though this shrimp looked good and was doing so good for Frank, and now, He's got this, he's got it isolated and quarantined in his own little container and letting it live out its life. And I think he's gonna try some of the treatments online, but I don't know what to tell him other than keep it separated and see what happens. Okay, so on the rest of these, I don't really have videos or access to make videos and pictures of 
thick shrimp thanks to Frank for sending me those pictures and he let me use them. So now we're going to have to use our Google and see what Google can tell us as far as getting a look at what these things look like. Scuderella japonica. This is probably by far the most common shrimp parasite. It is a parasitic flatworm that can look like little white spikes or little white worms that are usually attached to the rostrum of the shrimp or the shrimp's face. The good news is that while this is one of the most common issues with shrimp, it is also really not that harmful to the shrimp. If it is allowed to run out of control and left untreated, it can cause problems when you get eventually hit infestation levels. But this is something that shrimp normally live with and it's usually not something to worry too bad about unless it, unless it reaches infestation levels. Any new shrimp you purchase, should care, you should carefully examine for any signs of this. If you get new shrimp and see what appears to be Scuderella japonica, you can usually get rid of any worms by performing a salt dip that consists of one tablespoon of salt and one cup of water. Leave the shrimp in the salt solution for 20 seconds to a minute, depends. The longer you leave the shrimp in the solution, the better chance it has to rid the shrimp of the Scuderella, but the harder it is on the shrimp, so keep that in mind. More times than not, this will kill any of the worms immediately, but it will not, it will not kill the eggs. They lay their eggs in the shrimp gill plates. So if you see any white dots by the shrimp's gills, then you, ha then you have eggs. When the shrimp molts, the eggs are left in the molt, then hatch and are in the tank looking for a new shrimp to attach itself to. This is how the disease, the parasite spreads. This means that if you're trying to treat with salt dip method, you will need to remove all shrimp molts as soon as possible. Medications such as fembendazole and no no planaria work on Scuderella, but these come at their own risks. So, since I just mentioned fembendazole as a possible treatment for Scuderella, let's, let's talk about a couple other common issues that fembendazole is effective against. Fembendazole is a drug used to deworm mainly farm animals, but it can be used with careful dosing and great caution in our shrimp tanks. It is my preferred choice of treatment for many different problems. I come across in the hobby, but it definitely is not without risks. Certain kinds of snails will die from exposure to fenbendazole. I've made a couple videos about dosing fenbendazole in the past, and I'll put a link in the description to my latest fenbendazole video. It is very important to do your research before dosing any medication into your shrimp tanks, especially fenbendazole. This video is not intended as a full comprehensive guide, but more of an overview to some of the most popular issues people are in this run into a shrimp. Planaria is a parasitic flatworm like Scuderella. These guys will attach themselves to shrimp. They are aggressive predators and especially deadly to baby shrimp. While planaria are not likely to come in on new shrimp, they are likely to come in on new plants. Planaria is not so much an infection with individual, individual shrimp as it is an issue with tanks. Fenbendazole is especially effective against planaria as it is a flatworm like Scuderella. Do not confuse planaria with other microfauna that are okay in your shrimp tanks. Planaria can be identified by the triangle on their heads. Another shrimp tank nasty that can be treated with fenbendazole, like planaria, is not so much an individual shrimp problem, but a shrimp tank problem that is often brought in on plants. You can think of hydra as a type of jellyfish. It has tentacles that it uses to catch and kill baby fish with, or baby, baby shrimp with. It has little tentacles that stings and catches just like a jellyfish does. Nasty little critter. And you can get thousands and thousands of them. So, and you don't want to pick them up or try to pick at them because every little piece you, that breaks off, if they split them in two, then you just got two of them. So. You need to like vacuum them out or treat them with some kind of medication like fenbendazole. Another common shrimp issue is vorticella. It can easily be confused with scuderella as it presents in a similar fashion, but it is not a flatworm parasite like scuderella is. It is a protozoan infection. The difference is that while scuderella looks like white spikes, vorticella looks like white fuzz on a shrimp's face. While not deadly in most cases, it can begin to cause problems at infestation levels. The best treatment for vorticella seems to be salt dips. This is one I haven't had any experience with or know much about on either first hand or second hand experience. So I'm just going by what the Google machine tells me on this one. <laughs> I had to do some research for this one since I'm not an expert at shrimp diseases because 
from the very, very beginning, I've always got my shrimp from home breeders or some very, very, very reputable sellers. So I learned that from the very beginning from watching the YouTube videos like Lucas Brett's always talking about the importance of homebred shrimp back then when what really happened when Facebook took away the ability for people to sell in groups, sell live animals, that's when shrimp hobbyist to hobbyist shrimp transactions kind of, uh, that really put a big dent in it. Now, there are some stuff like band and stuff, but the whole Facebook thing really put a big, big dent in the hobbyist to hobbyist shrimp selling shrimp and you know hobbyist to hobbyist is always going to be your best shrimp so while i just covered some of the basic shrimp elements and touched a little bit on their treatments the most important point i want to make in this whole thing is that we need to think before we just start getting new shrimp and plants we need to realize everything we toss in our tanks all carries a risk always 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 Quarantine your new shrimp. Never mix shrimp from different sources because you're doubling your chances of being exposed. But above all, the most important thing you can do is get your shrimp and plants from trusted places. And if you can get your shrimp from a good home breeder, that's even better as they are much, much less likely to suffer from these shrimp ailments. Remember, this information is not meant to be comprehensive covering everything. It's just touching on the basics and the most common problems. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope I helped someone out. Bye.